Welcome along, everybody. It's Monaco Saturday and potentially the most important qualifying session of the season. So far in 2024, we've been to Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Australia, Japan, China, Miami and Imola. And Max Verstappen has taken pole at every single Grand Prix qualifying session. He took pole at Abu Dhabi at the end of last year as well. He is on for nine successive poles. And if he does that today, that will be a record for Formula One. But to get pole around here in Monaco, as he found out for the first time last year, is easier said than done. 19 turns, iconic corners, the barriers just millimetres away from you as we reach a top speed of 182 miles an hour. Hard tyre, medium tyre, and it's the soft tyre we're interested in today. The C5, softest in the Pirelli range, but how will that cope with track temperatures at round about 48 degrees? The cars will be fuelled for multiple laps. Expect yellow flags, potential red flags, expect extreme qualifying conditions and an hour Martin Brundle that we look forward to at the start of each and every season. I am very much looking forward to this qualifying session. It's been so close, isn't it? Uh, whilst Charles Leclerc appears to be fully on top of the Ferrari and the racetrack, of course, his back garden effectively from where he, uh, where he grew up. He knows the place incredibly well as a local lad, but he has been throwing that Ferrari beautifully around here. But right behind him, well, it's anybody's guess, isn't it, as to uh, who's going to deliver the lap. Can they keep it out of the wall? They'll build up to a crescendo. But the speed I'm seeing them carry through uh, corners like to back before yeah. the swimming pool, it, it just takes my breath away, frankly, that they, they've got the confidence and they need the accuracy as well to, uh, to just commit to a corner 125 miles an hour and skim the barrier either side. Sometimes they more than skim it. I had a chat down at Ferrari about the difference between Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz so far. It was six tenths of a second in that final practice session. I said, is it, is it set up? Is that, is that what's costing Carlos Sainz? They were a little bit maybe, but it's that confidence you were talking about. Charles Leclerc has been dialed in right from the start and Carlos has been struggling to find that, that bravery point and, and going over the limits to get that extra lap time. That's what Charles Leclerc has discovered. Is it his qualifying session to lose? Well, we will find out in a few moments' time. Yeah, you've got to peak at the right time here, and that is Q3, providing you get through to Q3 uh, through the earlier part of the system, of course, in qualifying. And that's when you deliver your best lap of the weekend. You don't want to, you don't want to deliver that on Saturday morning. <laughs> Very true. Ted Kravitz is down in the pit lane. Was it me, Ted, or did these cars leave the garages a little earlier than normal? Hello, Crofty. Hello, Martin. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the pit lane. What's uh, sure to be a frantic session. Yes, they have. And I don't know what everybody else knows that the Ferraris don't know, and maybe Charles Leclerc. Lewis Hamilton, as soon as we were playing the bit, Crofty, the with anthem. all of the... Uh, is that what it's called? The anthem? Yes. With all the drivers <laughs> looking mean to camera. Then Lewis Hamilton and everybody else that you can see in this... Well, supermarket traffic jam queue, or temporary traffic lights queue, whatever you want to call it, trundled down to the end of the pit lane, turned their engines off, and sat there, pretty much saying, this is my track position, and I'm going to keep it. Doesn't <laughs> include the Ferraris. So, uh, yeah, it's obvious to, as to why they're doing it. They want, uh, they want a nice, clean track. The Mercedes have got that in front of them. And uh, everybody else is just going to have to take their place behind them. But no Ferraris. Yeah. I've got both Red Bulls down here, Crofty, but uh, I'm not counting out any Ferraris yet. It, it resembled the valet parking outside the casino. McLarens and Aston Martins just stationary, going nowhere. But it's key you want to get a lap in before there's a yellow flag or a red flag uh, interrupting the process. And because in Q1, all 20 cars can run, of course, such a short lap, that means the best you can have is a 3.6 second gap if they were all absolutely equidistant around the track. That's not enough to get out of the turbulent air, really, of the car in front, but that's the best you're going to get. And they know, obviously, we lose five, then we lose another five, and that aspect becomes a little bit easier. But for the next 17 and three quarter minutes, they've got to find a gap and they've got to keep it out of the wall. If 3.6 seconds isn't enough, ideally, what would they like? Uh, they like at least six seconds, particularly well, on a higher speed circuit where you're really leaning on the, the aero, somewhere like Silverstone, for example. You'd like a little bit more, really, for the turbulent air. And it, it's no different to, you know, uh, an Airbus 380 taking off and 
you don't follow it closely in yeah. a small in a much smaller plane <laughs> you'll have a, you'll have a problem because the the air takes a while especially on a street circuit where it can sort of boil up and hang around inside the barriers this is harry testing testing one two one two well, hello and welcome to Monaco. Apologies for the delayed start. A couple of technical issues that we are battling through in the commentary box. But the sun is shining. Blue skies above the Circuit de Monaco, host to the 70th edition of the Monaco Grand Prix. And we are here for a super Saturday. It is the fight for pole position. And we have a fight on our hands. Q1 already underway, 16 and a half minutes remain and Lewis Hamilton, the first car out on track. Charles Leclerc, the Monegasque on home soil who has top two out of the three practice sessions so far this weekend is looking like the one to beat. But you can never rule out Max Verstappen. We're just on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea at the on the Côte d'Azur. And this is the sound of Lewis Hamilton making his way down to the right-hander of Mirabeau. First proper lap on the soft tyre, everybody going out on the red rubber tyre. Pirelli bringing the softest compound of tyre in the range, makes his way through the hairpin, full left-hand side down. And making his way round through into the tunnel, one of only a few circuits on the calendar to have a tunnel. But we're looking at a fight here. We've got the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc, the Red Bull of Max Verstappen, and you cannot discount the two McLarens. Lando Norris and Oscar Piastri in upgraded cars since Miami have been flying. Lando Norris embarks on his first flyer of the weekend. And in this session in Q1, gone. Uh, in this session, we'll lose the bottom five drivers. Everybody from 16th downwards. Lewis Hamilton embarking up through Sandoval. It's a real high incline as he makes his way through Casino Square. The left-hander of Massenet into Casino Square then heads downhill towards Mirabeau. A bumpy track here in Monaco. A lot of the drivers complaining about bumps and the handling of these Formula One cars. It's something that Max Verstappen has had issues with throughout the weekend so far and a Red Bull that is not fully dialed in but rule Max Verstappen out if you dare. Ram Portier the right hander into the tunnel for Lewis Hamilton. Of course Lewis Hamilton who has 2019 hasn't had a pole position since last season in Hungary. 2023, 14 minutes and 14 seconds remain. Guiding you through all the coverage is myself, Harry Benjamin, by the way. Alongside me is the former McLaren mechanic, Mark Priestley. And Mark, this is probably the busiest session in Q1 because it's 20 cars out on track. Everybody's going to try and find a gap. Lewis Hamilton has found a gap. His first flyer on the board, it's a 1.12.9. Yeah, and that gap is absolutely critical to getting the clear lap, which means a fast lap around here. Any traffic that you come across is going to hamper you, and there's just no room for that. You cannot have anything that gets in the way of that nice, clear, fast, flowing lap around the streets of Monte Carlo here. It's going to be a challenge. Max Verstappen is rapid in the first sector, loses a bit of time in the middle sector, has done all throughout the weekend to Charles Leclerc. The Ferrari just gets out of his way as Verstappen makes his way around the right hand of Anthony Noakes. The final corner, the DRS, the rear wing flat flies open down the main straight. Fastest of anybody so far. Max Verstappen, a 1.12.7. Piastri making his way through the left hander of Tabak. Lap time's coming in thick and fast now as Verstappen, Hamilton, Sonoda, Sargent, and Russell, the early flyers. But 13 minutes remain, and the bottom five drivers will be eliminated come the end of those 13 minutes. Yeah, Kevin. Magnussen goes quickest. Nico Hulkenberg now goes quickest. The lap times are tumbling lap by lap. Every time somebody gets a little bit braver, a little bit more confident, they can push closer to that barrier and everybody now putting in faster and faster laps. This is going to be a race to the end of the session to find out who ends up well inside that top 15 and safely making it through to Q2. You're listening to live coverage of qualifying for the Monaco Grand Prix. Apologies if you were trying to join us a little earlier. We had a big technical issue, which we are still working through, but we are delighted to have you with us as we make our way into what is possibly 
the peak performance of a Formula One car and driver threading the needle around the streets of Monaco. This is the sound of Charles Leclerc through the right-hander of Raskas, his first flyer on the board. It's a personal best in sector one and two. He's a little bit down on Nico Hulkenberg, who's got the fastest lap time so far as we gear up on times. Initial first lap from Charles Leclerc is a 1.12.8, four tenths down from Nico Hulkenberg's time of a 1.12.4. His teammate Kevin Magnussen is a tenth back. So it's the two asses one and two in these early stages, but the track will be constantly evolving, constantly rubbing in. We've got support category action here as well in the form of F2, F3 and Porsche Super Cup next across the line. Lando Norris slides up into third fastest in front of his teammate Oscar Piastri. And this is all about peaking at the right time, isn't it? Q1, of course, all you've got to do is make it into that top 15 and make sure you're safely through to Q2. In Q2, it's all about getting into the top 10 and really what you want is your ultimate fastest lap when it really matters in Q3 for that shootout for the all-important pole position. It's building the confidence every single lap getting closer and closer to those barriers. George Russell now on a flyer. Everybody just building their own confidence, finding out exactly how their car is going to behave in these conditions at this time of day as the temperature around 21 and a half degrees air, 43 and a half, 45 and a half track temperature. Everybody getting quicker and quicker as the session rolls on. Russell goes fastest, the tenth and a half clear of anybody. Russell to the top of the times. His teammate is next across the line. Not quite as fast, lost a bit of lap time in the final sector for Lewis Hamilton slots into third but Max Verstappen now making his way through the swimming pool section the quick right left hander that takes you and feeds you out right underneath our commentary box into the braking zone off cambered right hand turn through Raskas the pit lane entry to your right bumping over the final corner of Anthony Nobbs down the main straight what can Max Verstappen do he goes to the top a 1-12-0 in the elimination zone at the moment we're looking at Charles Leclerc Fernando Alonso Sergio Perez Valtteri Bottas and Joe Guan Yu but don't expect it to change I don't expect it to stay like that for uh, the duration of this session we'll wait and see Leclerc's lap next time around he's just made his way through the hairpin Piastri is fastest of anybody in the middle sector the two Saubers they're currently 19th and 20th Valtteri Bottas didn't get any time in FB3 after a a collision with the wall. Joe Guan Yu has been struggling out on track as well. The Sauber's mightily off the pace. They're down in 19th and 20th at the moment, but we'll expect Leclerc, Alonso and Perez all to fight their way through. Piastri now to the top of the times. A 1.11.8, two tenths clear of Max Verstappen. Fernando Alonso gets up into third. Then it's, Ru then it's Stroll in fourth. Russell in fifth. Let's head down to the pits in this uh, first Q1 session. Jenny Gao. Thank you so much, Harry Benjamin. I can tell you, I've spoken to lots of engineers and mechanics as we go into this session, and everyone thinks it's pretty close with the top six, maybe seven drivers that could get pole. But I think the message I was receiving loud and clear was Charles Leclerc, the fans' favourite from Monaco, he's grown up here, yeah, is favourite to win. And uh, get on, Jen, pole. Crazy traffic. Could be traffic. So that's Ricardo on the radio just uh, mentioning about how crazy the traffic is. And Jenny, that is going to be talk of Q1, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, 20 drivers going around this 3.3 kilometer circuit, trying to each find their own fast lap and the best lap they can. And even um, in the practice One sec, Jen. Seen... Again, sorry, Carlos signs on the radio, more traffic. That's OK. Some sessions are just get interrupted all the time and that's absolutely fine. Yes, I think it's going to be hard to find a space with 20 drivers going around 3.3 kilometres of, of circuit, but they will. They'll, they'll use all the backup they can from their teams to find that space and, and put in their hot laps. They certainly will. Uh, what kind of delta, Mark, do you need around this track in terms of a gap in front of you? What's the ideal? Well, unfortunately, you never get the ideal, but uh, really you want as much as possible. You don't even want to see another car. Comes this is the worst uh, position that we are out of phase with everybody. So that's Leclerc on the radio, out of phase with everybody. So what's he alluding he's, to there, Mark? He's talking about the fact that most people now have done their first run already, now back in the pits, getting a fresh set of tyres, building up ready for the, the second and final run. Charles Leclerc is just out of sync with everybody, so he's going to end up either at a point where he doesn't get a chance to do that final lap or he's going to be out at a point where everyone else is just getting ready for the fastest point in the session. Yeah, he means he's trying to do a fast lap when too many other cars are trying to do a slow lap and vice versa, basically. 
That's the voice of the BBC's chief, uh, the BBC F1 correspondent, Andrew Benson, alongside myself, Harry Benjamin, is the former McLaren mechanic, Mark Priestley, and down in the pits with us as well as Jedi Gao. Seven minutes and 13 seconds remain of Q1. A reminder, it's the bottom five drivers who will find themselves eliminated at the end of this seven minutes. At the moment, at risk, are the two RBs of Tsunoda and Ricardo. Logan Sargent is 18th in the Williams and the two Saubers of Bottas and Joe. I think we can... Uh, well, I'd never want to assume anything in Formula 1, but the two Saubers have been troubling in the top 15 all weekend long, so they may well book themselves those two slots in Q1. But the RBs have been looking quick. Certainly, Yuki Sonoda throughout practice, we know they like to do some low fuel runs, so we can't get a full read, but expect the RBs to try again for a faster lap time. But the field spread is actually fairly tight. The, the top, well, it's half a tenth, six tenths down to, to 15th. Well, it's because it's such a short lap here, so there isn't room for everybody to, to space out. It's the same reason we end up with so many traffic problems. It's just not the length of circuit to spread those cars out. But what you do find here, because of the, the nature of the circuit, is like drivers can find reasonably big chunks of time on a particular lap. What is very difficult to do is consistently bang in the same lap time over and over. And that means that the current order can still change dramatically in these closing six minutes of Q1. Carlos Sainz finding more and more time in his Ferrari. He's taken a little bit of time to dial in to his car this weekend. Has just crossed the line fourth fastest. He's the quickest man in the final sector by about a tenth and a half. Sainz currently fourth. His teammate Charles Leclerc just on an outlap now down in 13th at the moment as he begins his first fly and heads off down to saint -Devant. Jenny. Yeah, there are so many teams that I think feel like they do have a chance coming into qualifying today. You've got the McLarens in their special Senna livery, tribute livery today. You've got Hamilton and Russell in the Mercedes that might be able to snatch it. You've also got the Ferraris, you've got the Red Bulls, and I, I think on the outside, if Alonso puts together something special, he could challenge. So I think a lot of people in this paddock are hopeful that they can snatch that pole position. Charles Leclerc, who has been on pole position twice here in 2021 and 2022, but has never stood on the podium. Bad luck follows the Monegas around his home track, but so far it has been a nice, smooth and quick weekend for Leclerc. But a reminder, the battle for pole will come shortly at the moment. It is all about getting through into the top 15 and at risk Sergio Perez is right on the bubble in 15th on an outlap he hasn't been as quick as his teammate all weekend long and at the end of FP3 was heard on the radio that they're saying I'm paraphrasing but the car was nowhere they've got a long way to go still as four and a half minutes left of the Q1 session Magnussen briefly tops the times and then Leclerc finishes off his lap a 111.6 for the Monegas tops the session yeah, Leclerc finally got his clean lap. That's what he needed, it was a, an uninterrupted lap. The only car he came across was actually his teammate, who, of course, bowed out of the way nice and easy to let him through. So he got, finally got a clean lap on the board, and that puts him top of the timesheets back, where he's been for a lot of the weekend so far, and, of course, exactly where he hopes to be at the end of this qualifying hour. Alex Albon in the Williams also has been having a lot of issues with his tyres this weekend on the radio. Has the best qualifying so far this year of 12th back in Saudi Arabia and Australia. And still no points to his name or his teammates. Logan Sargent Williams currently ninth in the Constructors Championship. Yet to get off the mark. Only ahead of Sauber who also have yet to get off the mark. Those two teams languishing at the back at the moment. Albon 15th. Personal best in the first sector as Stroll goes second fastest. Albon's teammate Sargent down in 18th at the moment. The drivers at risk are indeed Albon, Perez, Sonoda, Sargent, Bottas and Joe as George Russell now goes fastest over a tenth clear of Leclerc. And also you can add Landon Norris to that. He is on a lap now which should, if he continues in this way, get him out of that risk section. He's in P14 at the moment. But these guys that are on their laps now that are down the back of the order, they're under massive pressure because they're going to get one chance. They've got to deliver. And if with a busy track the way it is, if they come across traffic, that could mess up the one and only lap they get a chance to, to set here and they could find themselves out of qualifying. All those at risk are going again and are all finding time. Albon comes across the line to go fifth fastest. Sonoda flying in the middle sector, fastest of anybody. Bottas crosses the line, can only manage 18. That 
allows Ricardo still to stay in 14th. Ocon is at risk, down in 15. The Alpine driver who made it through into Q2 last time out in Imola has been struggling all weekend long. Sonoda up to 7th. Ocon does find time and gets himself up into 10th. Sergio Perez and Lando Norris find themselves in the bottom five. Perez is still out on track and finding time in the middle sector, but Lando Norris is in the pits. Yeah, he's in the pits. As oh, he's, out, he's, out, out, he's out of the pits. He's, he's out of the pits. Through. But this is going to be putting him under massive pressure. There's two minutes on the clock. It's enough time to get round, get the tyres prepared, but it does mean that you get that one chance and you've got to find a clear gap on track. And there is absolutely no guarantee of that at this stage of qualifying. Piastri is lighting up the middle sector for McLaren. He's currently ninth at the moment, giving a little bit of hope as to what Lando Norris might be able to achieve. But he'll only have one lap to do it. A lot of pressure on young Lando Norris's shoulders. Now a Grand Prix winner and came within seven tenths of a second of the win last time out in Imola. It's the two Mercedes who find themselves at the top of the times. Less than half a tenth separate them. Russell a 111.4. Then it's Hamilton, Leclerc, Verstappen, Stroll in fifth. Albon in sixth and head of Magnussen. Sonoda rounds out the top eight. Then it's Hulkenberg, Piastri the top ten. Ocon, Sainz, Alonso, Perez all in that danger zone. Sargent at risk in 15th. And at the moment, if it were to end like this, Gasly, Ricardo, Norris, Bottas and Joe would all find themselves out of qualifying. Alonso coming through the middle sector. He's got a lot of traffic now into the final sector, but it gets out of his way. Round the right-hander of Raskas through Anthony Noves as the hill drops down onto the main straight. What can Alonso find in his Aston Martin? The answer is not a lot. In fact, nothing at all. He stays in 13th. He won't be able to go again. But there is a big old queue approaching Raskas as they all try approaching Anthony Noves on the exit of Raskas as they all try and find themselves enough of a gap to set a lap time. Lando Norris is one of them and he has now up the ante, it crosses the line, down towards turn one, through Sandoval, uphill, up through the gears. One final attempt for Lando Norris to make his way through into the next part of qualifying. Yeah, he's found himself a gap or created himself a gap by holding back such a long way at the start of the lap. Something the stewards don't normally look uh, very kindly on at all, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Everything is a little bit different here at Monaco, but he has got himself a bit of clear space. He's got to make it count, though. Lando Norris at the moment down in 18th position and going out of qualifying unless he can turn this lap into something pretty decent. We know he's got the pace. Has he got the opportunity right now when it matters? Signs in 12th. Alonso, Sargent won't get another lap. He takes the checkered flag in 14th. Perez will all be in trouble here. Signs crosses the line. That's more like it for the Spaniard. Goes up into third. This is the sound of Lando Norris through the left-hander of Tabak. He's three tenths up on Sargent to make his way through into Q2. Piastri a little bit down in the middle sector. But Piastri is up in 12th at the moment, but in that danger zone. Perez going for another lap as well. But this needs to count for Lando Norris who hasn't been knocked out in Q1 all year long across the line for Lando Norris what can he do finds two and a half tenths it's enough for ninth it should be enough to seal him through his teammate finds a heap of time and up into second but out in Q1 he will not get another chance Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin won't make it through neither will Sergio Perez down in 18th he crosses the line cannot find the time Perez didn't make it into Q3 last week he doesn't make it into Q2 this week at a track where qualifying is crucial at a time where Sergio Perez's future is uncertain he'll start 18th on the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix but what about Fernando Alonso he started from the pit lane in Imola he'll start 16th for the Monaco Grand Prix Sargent will be behind him then it's Perez and the two Saubers of Valtteri Bottas and Joe Guan Yu that is an absolute disaster for Perez it's also a disaster let's hear from him hey, AT. I'm at the joke <laughs> Not a very funny joke. It's a joke, unfortunately, that uh, he is the butt of. He's, he's down in uh, an 18th position, out of qualifying, and it's terrible for him. It's also terrible for the team. Think about this Constructors' Championship. We talked about it earlier in the weekend. Red Bull now, for a first time this season, coming under massive pressure from the teams behind. It may not play out at every single racetrack, but Ferrari are bringing performance to the car. McLaren bringing performance. Red Bull need two drivers in the mix at every Grand Prix weekend. And once again, Sergio Perez has fallen short. 
So the two Saubers right at the back of the pack. Joe Guan Yu still unable to out-qualify his teammate Valtteri Bottas. The Chinese driver hasn't made it past the first section of qualifying all season long. Valtteri Bottas just ahead. And it's Sergio Perez. His worst qualifying up until now had been last time out in Imola in 11th spot. And that was a tough mission to come through at a track where it's difficult to overtake. But the barriers, well, at least you have a little bit of runoff in Imola. You don't get that here. Logan Sargent doesn't make it through into Q2. His teammate, Alex Albon, does. It was a great lap from Albon in the end. Finished up sixth at the end of that session. So Logan Sargent uh, continues to not be able to out-qualify his teammate 7-0 now in the favour of Albon and Fernando Alonso in an Aston Martin that has been going backwards in the last couple of races finds himself out of Q1 and out-qualified by Lance Stroll, his teammate. It can only be something's gone wrong. Well, I mean, it's Q1 in um, Monaco. It's probably traffic. We did see him having some cars in front of him briefly on the telly. Um, we're getting some replays at the moment of um, the Stappen slap, and he's getting some traffic up the hill, as we're seeing. So it's, it's obviously a recurring theme in Q1. But I have asked the team, and they haven't said a definitive answer. This is Aston Martin. But um, they did say they think it was traffic. And getting super close to the wall, Max Verstappen and many drivers in uh, Q1, which uh, in the blink of an eye is done and dusted. Just a reminder then, out of that session is Fernando Alonso in 16th, ahead of the Williams of Logan Sargent. Sergio Perez, the other big name, to fall at the first hurdle in 18th ahead of Valtteri Bottas in the Salba and his teammate Joe Guan Yu. I think both Alpines will be happy to have gotten both cars through into Q2. Uh, at the end of Q1, Gasly finished 8th. Ocon just managed to make it through into 15th. And uh, let's remember, cast our minds back to FP1 where Pierre Gasly didn't get any running for a power unit issue. But I have to say, Mark, the thing that lit up my eyes was the Mercedes drivers in Q1, both of them right on the pace from the get-go. Yeah, and it's been a theme of the weekend, hasn't it? Particularly in the hands of Lewis Hamilton. He seems like he's been particularly comfortable in that car around this circuit. It seems like this circuit, given its slow speed, tight and twisty nature, eliminates some of the problems that are inherently built into that Mercedes. And that means that the drivers are able to step up and add enough performance that they're gener generally right up at the front so really good boost for everybody at Mercedes uh, well done it's only Q1 of course and the next two matter even more also though the biggest of the traffic issues now passed because five drivers will not take part in this next session meaning there will only be 15 at its busiest time do you know what I think this is a massive opportunity then with big names like Fernando Alonso and Sergio Perez out of the running who can capitalise on this who can make the most of their qualifying because we all know Qualifying at the front of this grid is absolutely crucial if you want a decent race. And I think there are points up for grabs for teams you wouldn't normally be in the running because of those big scalp ha ha scalps having fallen in the first bit of qualifying. Well, the, the statistics speak for themselves, though, how, how crucial qualifying is. 31 of the 69 official Grand Prix that have happened here in Monaco have been won from pole. Wins from the front row, 47 from 69. The furthest back win was a bit of a fluke, I think, but it was still a mighty drive from Olivier Panis back in 1996 from all the way down in 14th spot. So, well, if, if it qualified, uh, if we've ended qualifying now, that would be Nico Hulkenberg in that coveted spot. Not sure that'll happen uh, on Sunday, but uh, certainly seems like it's uh, early pace setters from Mercedes but Oscar Piastri flying up there in the McLaren as well after a bit of an up and down Friday he was quick but couldn't quite have the same consistency as his teammate but I feel like he's really dialed in across the weekend now yeah and as I said earlier on you know consistency is the hardest thing to do around here and actually particularly when it comes to qualifying you don't really need consistency it's lovely if you've got it but actually what you need is to bang in the very fast lap when it really matters um, so, you know, I, th I think let's not read too much into the current order from, from Q1 because some drivers will have eased off feeling they're safe, will have not had to push or not had to find that elusive gap that others have felt massively under pressure to do so. So let's have a look at how it uh, unfolds in Q2 because, as I say, five cars fewer on circuit, a little bit more space to play with, but still the same massive pressure that they're all under. Tell you what, though, Mark, the cars are queuing to get out and on track and they all want to be first. Um, there can only be one man that is first, but uh, they are going to 
try and get out in a decent order and find some decent space. My, my timing screen has just, the only person it's saying is out on track is Ricardo. And I, don't, I know that's not right because I can see them. Yeah, no, Hulkenberg <laughs> was the first out, then Ricardo, Albon, Norris, Verstappen have all made their way out now. And uh, Q2 underway then, 14 minutes and 15 seconds remain. And it will be the next bottom five to be eliminated. So everybody down from 11th through to 15th. It's the fight to get into the top 10. And I suppose what this does do now, Mark, Q1 was always going to be a bit of a nightmare with traffic. We've lost five cars now, so that should ease those troubles. Yeah, a little bit more space on the racetrack, and that'll, of course, improve even further for the lucky 10 remaining into Q3. But uh, it still doesn't make it simple. You know, it's still busy. It's still a very tight and twisty place, and you still have to get that gap. You've got to find that space. And it's a, a job for the engineers as much as it is for the drivers to communicate with those drivers and tell them where the traffic is on circuit, send them out at the right times so they can find that gap, because the gap is everything around here. You've got to have an un uninterrupted lap to get your, your best lap time in. So let's see how they all fare with just over 13 minutes left on the clock. That's the voice of the former McLaren mechanic, Mark Priestley, alongside myself, Harry Benjamin. We've got Jenny Gow down in the pits and the BBC's F1 correspondent, Andrew Benson. The sun is shining here in Monaco. The grandstands are absolutely packed. So too is the harbour, full of super yachts everywhere you look as Lando Norris makes his way uphill through Sandovot. Jenny. Yes, just a reminder that Max Verstappen has had every pole position so far this year when it comes to the Grand Prix on a Sunday. So we're talking about who can threaten him, talking about maybe Charles Leclerc taking that pole position. It will be an almighty challenge for them with the form and the, the, the Red Bull and Max is in to actually take that. Yeah, if Max Verstappen can take pole, he'll look to set the new record of nine consecutive pole positions. He matched Ayrton Senna's record with eight last time out in Imola. If he gets it again this weekend, he will set the new benchmark, which is what we're getting used to in Formula One. Verstappen breaking and then making new records in his mighty red ball. As the track starts to get a little bit busy now, Verstappen flying fastest of anybody in the first sector, but Norris has the fastest middle sector. Leclerc just coming through the middle sector now. Sonoda behind him is having a decent middle sector too. Lando Norris will be the first one to come across the line. Round the right hand of Anthony Nose. There's a big bump as there's almost a bit of a crest that you then drop down over onto the main straight crosses the line. Opening lap time from Norris is a 1.11.3. Let's see what Verstappen's got to the line. He pips him with a 1.11.1. Yeah, decent lap from both of them actually and it's really important to get a, an early banker lap in because what you don't know here is that uh, there's going to be yellow flags you know when one of those comes along that's uh, Ocon just saying he's been blocked so lots of drivers talking about traffic as is always the case here but getting that early banker lap in that's a good solid lap time is really important because as the session rolls on if a yellow flag comes out when you're on a hot lap the rules state you have to ease off you have to show that you've backed off and taken the right precautions in case it's an accident that can ruin your critical lap so really really important to get one in the bank now and Verstappen Carlos Sainz and Lando Norris having done that nicely just uh, off the back of Ocon's radio message, they're saying he's been blocked. Uh, just looking at the driver track to see which driver he's behind. This is teammate, Pierre oh Gasly. <laughs> so I wonder if that relationship continues to blossom uh, down at the French team. And uh, Nico Hulkenberg just had a little bit of a moment as well coming through Sander Vaught, getting all crossed up. And I think he did make a little bit of contact with I the think barrier. So. Yeah, I think he did. Hopefully not too heavy, but yeah, left rear did. I think Shaw made contact with the Arnco barrier, but he's, he looks like he's living to fight another day so far. Can he make it through into Q3? That is the question. Consistently, Nico Holkenberg has made it through into the top 10 on the last three occasions in Formula One, looking to make it four consecutive Q3 appearances this time around. And you have to say his teammate, who he has out trounced uh, that's not a word outpaced in qualifying 5-2 <laughs> so far this weekend Magnussen has been a lot closer to Hulkenberg around the streets of Monaco Magnussen saying in the build-up to this weekend this along with every other driver is his favorite track <laughs> on the Formula One calendar but with 10 minutes to go of Q2 signs in the Ferrari now has the fastest lap time a 111-1 ahead of Verstappen Sonoda up in third Leclerc fourth Norris fifth ahead of his teammate Piastri sixth then it's Albon Magnussen Hulkenberg Ricardo make up the top 10 and then in that elimination zone it's Gasly Hamilton who's just coming through the tunnel now on a quick lap Ocon 
has just made his way up into force. That puts Ricardo down in front of Gasly, Hamilton, Russell, and still no time yet from Lance Stroll, who is out there and actually just about to set his first flying lap. So we'll see where that puts him. It puts him eighth. Yeah, so Verstappen is consistently fastest in the first sector, which is a very fast, if you think about it, it's only really got one major corner down at Sandovot, turn one, then you go up the hill, very, very high speed, full throttle sections, the Red Bull very, very quick there. It's when it gets to that middle section where it's all about bouncing over the curbs, clipping apexes, the tight and twisty stuff. That's where the Red Bull's suffering and struggling a little bit, certainly in comparison to the Ferrari and maybe even the Mercedes. So. It's a sort of a, a swings and roundabouts type thing here. There's different cars that are quickest at different parts of the lap. But at the moment, Max Verstappen goes quickest with a 1.11.0. How high do you think something like track evolution is here? Because we're seeing Ocon put in a half-decent lap time for an Alpine that has been so off the pace. He's within three-tenths at the moment of Verstappen. Obviously, we've still got eight and a half minutes of Q2 remaining. But... Uh, I know Monaco does sort of minimise the, the gap between the, the, the top and the bottom, but it wasn't, that's not a bad lap time from Ocon. No, you do get track. Uh, let's listen to Ocon. Blocking, blocking. I'm stood okay. <laughs> yeah, that was Hulkenberg he was referring to. Yeah, you, you do get track evolution here because, of course, don't remember, these are streets that you can drive around in your road car even in the evenings of a Grand Prix weekend. So they open it up to the public every other day of the year. This is just the same kind of streets that you and I drive around. So the moment you start putting racing cars on them on a race weekend and laying rubber down, yes, you get track evolution. But actually, the biggest evolution is in the driver himself. It's getting that driver evolution in terms of the confidence every single lap being able to push closer and closer to the barriers that's where the lap time is so the more laps you get as a driver and as a team and as long as they're clean generally the start the more you start edging towards your ultimate pace alex albon just coming across the line now improves his lap time but stays 11th fastest the best qualifying from albon around here of 10th back in 2019 i think re-signed with the Williams team on a multi-year deal through 2026 in the last few weeks committed his future to Williams while his teammate is still yet to be decided Logan Sargent out in Q1 a reminder we lost some big names in Q1 Fernando Alonso being one of them and Sergio Perez in the Red Bull as well that will be a tough Sunday afternoon for Red Bull and Aston Martin to manage. Into Q2 now, though, seven minutes remain and a uh, mix of cars still in the pits and also on track. Uh, at the moment, it's Verstappen who's fastest. He's in the pits. Sainz has just gone out on an outlap. Sonoda is out there too, currently third. Ocon went into fourth spot having then just pitted Leclerc is fifth and Leclerc has been the one to watch so far this weekend but he hasn't lit up the timing screen so far in these qualifying sessions well he doesn't need to until Q3 I suppose is probably the answer there but um, he is, he's been the guy that seems most comfortable with his car on this circuit and if that remains the case if he can get the clean lap and as we said earlier that getting that clean lap becomes easier and easier as the qualifying sessions go on and we lose more and more cars as long as he makes it through to Q3 he's in a very good position I think Think to dominate this racetrack on the streets where he grew up. We normally get a little lull around now in qualifying as Hamilton sets off on another fly lap, but when cars come into the pits in that lull in qualifying, what's, what, what's the communication like in the garage between team and driver? What's happening in, in that part of this session? Well, there's very little that you can change, certainly mechanically on the car. The cars are in park ferme, which limits and restricts what you can do in, in terms of setup. But you, are, you still want feedback from your driver because there's switch position changes you can make on your steering wheel. The engineers are looking at data, and it's all about understanding exactly what the driver's feeling, comparing that to what the data says. Most of all, though, you just want to keep your driver comfortable and, and not distracted in any way, keep them happy, keep them focused. I cannot overstate how important your driver is here around, around Monaco, more so than perhaps any other racetrack. Lewis Hamilton emerges from the tunnel into the blazing daylight, downhill breaking through the Nouvelle Chicane, chucks it left, then right, then it's a short straight line down to the left-hander of Tabak, and then it tightens up, fastest of anybody in the middle sector for Lewis Hamilton through the swimming pool chicane, lighting up the time screen, so too is uh, Oscar Piastri down in the McLaren, having a good middle sector at the moment, he's a few corners back from Hamilton who will cross the line now finds time puts himself up into third still behind Sainz and Verstappen Piastri improving his time now coming into the final sector let's see what the McLaren man has Russell out on a lap as well 
which seems to be going fairly decently. Signs and Leclerc out on track. Leclerc embarking on a flyer as Piastri completes his lap and goes fastest of anybody. The Aussie in his second season of Formula One is dialing himself in nicely to the streets of Monaco. Last year, he qualified 11th and finished the race in 10th. Right now, he is dicing up at the sharp end, but Charles Leclerc is still flying through the hairpin, the left-hander, then the right-hander approaching now the tunnel as he makes his way through Portier into the darkness of the tunnel. Personal best for Leclerc in the first sector. Yeah, and as we said earlier, it's been it's been Verstappen who's lit the timing sheets up purple, which means fastest of anybody in that first sector. Leclerc, though, going very quickly. It's now in the middle part of the lap, coming through to back and into the swimming pool section. That's where the Ferrari comes alive, dancing through the curbs, threading it through like the eye of the needle. Through he goes past the chicane, just keeps it out of the wall and heads down towards Raskat. Raskas to close this lap, but this looks like it could be a good one. Carlos Sainz, his teammate, manages to just get out of the way. Round the right-hander of Anthony Noakes, downhill. The DRS rear wing flap flies open across the line for Leclerc. It's second fastest, a 1.10.8, a tenth, less than a tenth behind Oscar Piastri. Three and a half minutes left on the clock, Jenny. Yes, just looking at Sonoda and how he's performing today. He's currently seventh, but in the pits. And as I look at Sergio Perez, um, the Red Bull driver, he finished 18th. He's just talking to the media. But you know what? Sonoda's doing all he can to say, you know what? I want that Red Bull seat. And he's doing a good job of it at the moment. Yeah, Yuki Sonoda is having a, a good run of races so far. 6-1 in his favour when it comes to qualifying. 5-1 in his favour when it comes to the race. And that's comparing to his teammate Daniel Ricciardo, who is also in the pits and currently down in 15th spot. Norris to the line. Fastest of anybody. Half a tenth clear of himself. Less than half a tenth clear of himself. Uh, and his teammate Piastri, who now comes into the pits. We won't see Piastri again, I imagine. On the bubble, Gasly in 10th, Stroll 11th, Albon 12th, the two Hasses, Magnussen ahead of Hulkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo on an outlap now, Alex Albon coming to the line, vying to get through into Q3 and it's a good lap time from the tie driver up to 8th. Yeah, very good very strong from both McLarens, I did just see a radio comment from Oscar Piastri saying he's hit the wall, uh, nothing can't, can't be anything too serious because he's continued has made his way back to the pits and we certainly haven't seen a replay but that McLaren really on the ragged edge but it is delivering lap time isn't it? Pierre Gasly out there as well looking for his first top 10 appearance of the year it's been a tough season for the Frenchman with the best qualifying so far of 12th in his Alpine back in Miami at the moment he sits in 11th about a 10th behind his teammate Ocon who is inside the top 10 but we're still awaiting laps from the likes of Lance Stroll who is making his way through Casino Square now the two Hasses of Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg are both out on track Magnussen's actually having a pretty decent middle sector Ricardo as well coming into the final sector on an outlap we'll see what he's got next time around he'll have one lap to do it his teammate is also on an outlap currently up in ninth Norris tops the times, Piastri second, Leclerc third, Russell on an outlap, Verstappen in fifth, Sainz, Hamilton also on an outlap in seventh, Albon just crossed the line in eighth, Sonoda ninth, Ocon the top ten. And less than one-tenth covering the top three as it stands, two McLarens and Charles Leclerc, nothing in it. Lewis Hamilton also on an outlap, he needs to deliver because he's currently in seventh place and this could still all shift around in the closing moments. Hulkenberg, I don't think, will make it through into Q3. He's just crossed the line, he's gone faster, but it's only enough for 12th. He can't pip the two Alpines. Can Nico Hulkenberg, will his run of consecutive Q3 appearances end in the next 40 seconds? Stroll can't get through either. Found time in the first and second sector, but fails to find time in the final sector. Lance Stroll, who crosses the line and stays in 13th. Verstappen crosses the line next, improves his time up into second on the bubble. Yuki Tsunoda in ninth. Esteban Ocon won't get another go. He's currently in tenth and in the pits. Gasly out there, coming through the middle sector now. Hulkenberg won't get another go in twelfth. Neither will Stroll. Magnussen in fourteenth is not having a good lap, so he won't uh, make it through either. Daniel Ricciardo coming into the final sector now. It's not been a brilliant lap for the Australian in the RB either. They might improve time, but it's going to be a tough ask to find seven tenths of a second. Gasly's up on time. Hamilton crosses the line in sixth, cements that position. Ricardo next across the line in the RB. Can he make it through and join his teammate into Q3? No, he can't. Ricardo once again out qualified by Sonoda down in 13th. 
Gasly across the line in the Alpine that hasn't made a top 10 appearance all year. Gasly through and up into fifth. That puts Sonoda down to 10th. Currently in the middle sector round Anthony Nogues. He's personal best sector one, personal best sector two. He should be okay to stay through because Stroll won't get another go. Neither will Magnussen who comes into the pit. Sonoda crosses the line, improves his time up into ninth. But Pierre Gasly, a lap and a half from the Frenchman. Yeah, and when it mattered, wasn't it? Right at the end of the session, he delivered. Alex Albon gets through into Q3 as well for the Williams. That is a really strong result, putting him into a really strong fight towards the end there. Sonoda too. Sainz just about got away with it. Hamilton, I watched his lap, and it was really kind of scrappy from Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, I really struggled to get tyres there. That first push. Daniel Ricciardo there struggling with his tyres. He finds himself out in Q2 and once again out qualified by his teammate. That is now 7-1 in his Japanese teammate's favour. At the end of Q2 then, it's Esteban Ocon in the Alpine who misses out in 11th. Nico Hulkenberg in the Haas behind him. Daniel Ricciardo in 13th. All right, mate. Uh, so we are P5. Let's go! Let's go! That was Pierre Gasly, in case you were wondering. He was pretty elated with that. And around a track like Monaco, where qualifying, I know we say it time and time again, is so important. Pierre Gasly hasn't scored any points this season. It's his statistically worst season ever in Formula One. In an Alpine car that was on the podium here last year and is now nowhere near the podium to get through. OK, he might not start the race in the top five, but to start inside the top ten is a magnificent achievement for Pierre Gasly. It's, it's huge, and it gives such a confidence boost, doesn't it? Because, as I said earlier, this is a, a circuit where the driver really is able to, to make a massive difference. So when the driver does make a massive difference, like that with Gasly, you know, it gives such a boost for that for that driver. The, the confidence that comes from that is going to be huge. So really, really strong. A number of drivers putting in really strong performances here when it matters, under pressure. Yeah, I think his teammate Esteban Ocon, uh, Pierre Gasly's teammate Ocon, will be ruining a lockup. Because Ocon to be 11th as well, that is an encouraging improvement from both Alpines. Uh, he is out, though, ahead of Hulkenberg, Ricardo Stroll in 14th, and Kevin Magnussen down in 15th. But... One of the bigger names to fall at the first hurdle was Sergio Perez down in 18th. Jenny, uh, what more can you tell us? Yeah, I've just been speaking to him, actually, and he says it was just terrible. Um, that was uh, the short version. Um, nothing went right. He got traffic. He listed off all the places that he got traffic. He just couldn't put together a clean lap. He said this is the second weekend in a row that it's been an absolute disaster when it's come to qualifying. And I asked him about the pressure. Does he feel that pressure? Does he feel the media talking about his seat and his future at Red Bull? And he said, no, when I'm, when I'm out there driving, I just put that to one side. It's just noise, he said. Um, and and he's, he's trying his best. And he said, well, next time I'll, I'll get it. But I, I look at him and I, I really feel for him because the pressure is mounting. People are talking about his future at Red Bull and if he's worthy to take that second spot in the team alongside Max Verstappen or they need someone else there to support Max and, and the team to get Constructors' Championship points. And yeah, Mark, when, when the whispers become shouts, it's hard for the driver to block that out totally. Yeah, of course. And we keep talking about how important the sort of lack of distractions, particularly around here is, you know, and uh, he, he might call it noise, but noise is a distraction. You know, whether you think you can block it out or not, it might be there in the subconscious, just sitting there niggling away. And particularly when you make a mistake, even a small one, that's the first thing that comes back into your mind. What are the world thinking? What are they going to be saying? What are the media going to be saying after this? And ending qualifying in P18 is the worst thing that could have possibly happened to him this weekend. At a time, thank you, Mark, for switching my mic on. <laughs> At a time when consistency is the big word that is bandied about by Red Bull when it comes to will they extend his contracts, this is not the consistency he wanted in terms of not getting out, uh, not getting in to Q3. Is he feeling the pressure dropped from second to third in the Drivers' Championship after last weekend? Uh, the pressure is on, Perez. The pressure's on, he's had a bad run, but the facts of the matter are that at the moment he's going to keep the seat by default because there's no one else out there that Rebel are more interested in having in the car than him. 
the obvious contender is Carlos Sainz, who's uh, lost his driver Ferrari to Lewis Hamilton for next year. Red Bull are not keen to put him back in with Max Verstappen after there was some tension between the various camps when they were teammates in Toro Rosso back in 2015. Other than that, all the top drivers are gone. And, um, you know, Christian Horner, the Red Bull team principal's position, has been quite consistent, actually. Although he said, on the one hand, that Perez needs to up his qualifying performance, and he has done uh, up until this recent run from Miami to, uh, to now, he has consistently been backing Perez publicly. And I know that behind the scenes, that's the direction that his thoughts are taking him. Um, so, yes, this is bad for Perez. Yes, there's pressure on him for his seat. But I don't think this necessarily means curtains for him at Red Bull. In fact, if I had to bet right now, I would say he would end up keeping that seat. Even if, you know, quite a lot of people in the paddock, including potentially me, think there are probably better drivers out there that they could put in. But that's, I'm not Christian Horner, so. No, you are Andrew Benson, the BBC's <laughs> F1 correspondent, alongside myself, Harry Benjamin, is also the former McLaren mechanic, Mark Priestley, down in the pits is Jenny Gower, just in that uh, middle time, waiting for Q3 to get going, the top 10 shootout, the fight for pole, and through into Q3, the Alpine of Pierre Gasly, the Williams of Alex Albon, the RB of Sonoda, the two Mercedes of Russell and Hamilton, the two Ferraris of Sainz and Leclerc, the two McLarens of Norris and Piastri, and the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. Come on then, guys. I want to know, who do you think is going to take this? Well, you know, when we did our podcast, the Checkered Flag podcast that you can find on BBC Sounds, still worth a listen, um, we did ask, we were asked that question, weren't we? And I went for Oscar Piastri, and I think I'm going to stick with it. I think there's a real unknown here, and it could, quite frankly, be any of the top five that we've been discussing, but I think Oscar Piastri's in with a good shout here. I'm, st oh, I'm going to go with, I'm going to stick with my initial prediction of Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Andrew? Well, I was going to say, actually, uh, before we got went down the Perez rabbit hole, was that it actually what's been surprising for me, the biggest thing about this qualifying session, apart from Alonso and Perez getting knocked out in Q1, is where's Leclerc's pace gone? He's, look, he's been on fire since the start of Friday, and he's, but since the start of qualifying, he's just, not, he's just not got those laps in in the same impressive way that he has before. Um, uh, he's still got a similar sort of margin to science, his teammate, maybe a little bit smaller than it was. Now, I don't know, of course, whether that's just circumstance. We know in Q1 uh, he was struggling being out of sync, you know, so uh, trying to do fast laps when others were doing slow and so on. Um, but there's not been a sign yet that Leclerc um, has got that pace. I would have gone for Leclerc before this session started. I would have said he was going to take pole by some margin, which would probably be a couple of tenths around Monaco. But now, I don't know. It could be him, it could be Verstappen, it could be Norris, it could be Piastri. I wouldn't go beyond that group of five, but that's five people in a... Is that five? Four. Four people in a group uh, battling for pole at Monaco. Um, we shouldn't be complaining too much about that. And we generally don't know who will walk away with pole position for the Monaco Grand Prix. You're listening to live coverage of qualifying around the Principality. The sun is shining, blue skies out as we're at the, in the foothills of the uh, Monaco hills that surround this street circuit just on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea on the Côte d'Azur. The harbour is full of super yachts. We have a fantastic view from our commentary box at the top of the grandstand which uh, looks out on the exit of the swimming pool section. Just opposite us is the pit lane. Busy as always. We're right opposite the McLaren garage and the Ferrari garage. Both still have two men in this fight. So too do Mercedes. Red Bull down one man they only have the Stappen and uh, it's a sole Alpine and a sole Williams along with a sole RB who has elected not to go out straight away everybody else has uh, gone out on that soft tire oh I say that Sonoda does go out so Al Albon through into top 10 already looking to be his best qualifying of the year Sonoda through makes it uh, a third consistent appearance into Q3 and Pierre Gasly will get his best qualifying by some margin, no matter where he ends up at the end of this session. Well, for the likes of Gasly and for the likes of Albon, I mean, what a great opportunity this is, because even if you end up in this Q3 session towards the back of that top 10, that's a wonderful place to be starting the Monaco Grand Prix and a great opportunity to score points, which will be really, really valuable for those teams. So they've put themselves in with a wonderful shout already. 
we certainly have around this 3.3 kilometer just over two mile circuit shortest on the calendar 19 turns eight to the left 11 to the right reaching a maximum speed of around about 284 kilometers per hour it is tight it is twisty it is fast as lewis hamilton makes his way out of the tunnel downhill braking through the nouvelle chicane a quick left and right sees him down the short straight towards the left hander of tabag this is where it gets tight and twisty through the swimming pool section out from below our commentary box it's another short slight left hand turn turn towards Raskas around the right hander then it's Anthony Noakes the final corner down the start finish straight there isn't really a straight here though something moved in the pedals that's Charles Leclerc on the radio saying something moved in the pedals or something has moved in the pedals he's just making his way through to back now what could that be do you think Mark well you know whatever it is this is this the kind of thing that I'm talking about you need to avoid in Monaco especially that's another thing that's now in his head and it could be that something's moved in terms of adjustments it could be that the brake pedal has just gone a little bit longer than it was earlier on and he's just feeling that difference but whatever it is if it's enough for him to talk about and mention on the radio it's enough to distract him Although not distracting too much because he's just stuck it fastest of anybody with a 110.4. Sounded quite relaxed on the radio as well. <laughs> uh, Oscar Piastri is flying though in all sectors, comes across the line second fastest for the McLaren. Your prediction might well end up being right, Mark. Lewis Hamilton just gets knocked down to fourth as Norris slides in behind his teammate. It's Leclerc on provisional pole ahead of the two McLarens of Piastri and Norris. Uh, then comes Hamilton, Albon in fifth, Gasly coming through into the final sector now on his attempt then Verstappen who has uh, is out of the lap at the moment across the line signs goes third fastest for Ferrari still no times uh, proper times on the board from Gasly Verstappen Russell and Sonoda as Sonoda does set his first flyer slots into sixth yeah, Verstappen again, as he has been all weekend so far, very quick in the very first sector. He's now in the middle part of the lap and going nice and quickly through that swimming pool section. And a lot of lap time to be gained in that Verstappen Red Bull car, but they're struggling to keep it under control over curves. It's very, very low. That's the way they have to run it. Very, very stiff. And it's being upset around the lumps and bumps of this track. But Verstappen on a lap, which he will hope will be able to get him right up, up amongst that Ferrari and that McLaren. Half a second adrift of Leclerc. George Russell down in fourth. His best qualifying here was back in 2022. He qualified sixth on the grid. Max Verstappen, a man who knows how to set the pace around this Monaco circuit. On pole here last year, fastest of anybody in the first sector. Good second sector, but he's down on Leclerc. And Piastri crosses the line. Third fastest for Verstappen. The fight is on for pole position here on the streets of Monaco. At the moment, it's advantage Ferrari and Charles Leclerc. Oscar Piastri in the McLaren is less than half a tenth of a second behind. Then it's Verstappen, who's a further tenth and a half back, signs his fourth, Russell fifth, Norris down in sixth ahead of Hamilton. Gasly on his flyer put the Alpine in eighth ahead of the RB of Yuki Tsunoda. So that is a good opening gambit from Pierre Gasly in Q3. And Alex Albon in tenth on an outlap now running a little bit out of sync with everybody else so we'll see what he's got he's just coming into the final sector now this is very exciting isn't it everybody else piling back into the pits after setting their early banker albon in the williams just looking for a clear track which is exactly what he's got right now on an outlap just about building up to his very fast flyer with no one else on the circuit that gives him a good opportunity but he is out of sync so he's using five and ten understood so that's Max Verstappen just talking about the issues with his car that he's clearly had earlier on and they haven't been able to uh, do anything about in turns five and ten. Alex Albon, the only man out on track. What a treat for Albon to have the entire Monaco circuit to himself, making his way through the hairpin. The man who has got a best qualifying here of 10, looking to try and recreate that, if not go better. He finished the race in 2019, that year in eighth spot, taking a few points for his troubles. But Alex Albon, who has recommitted his future in Formula One with the Williams team, with James Vowles, the team principal, at the helm. No wins, no pole positions to Albon's name just yet, but looking 
for another top 10 start and trying to get his first points on the board for this season. Williams, two out of the 10 teams yet to get off the mark. Round the final corner of Anthony Noakes. It's a neat and tidy lap for Alex Albon, the tie driver. The DRS rear wing flies open down the main straight. It's a 1.10.9 for Albon. Half a second adrift. It's enough to put him seventh. Yeah, decent lap. I think we, uh, we probably can't expect too much more from a Williams, but to find themselves up inside that top 10 anyway on a street circuit like Monaco, where overtaking is so difficult that if you can start within the top 10, you are definitely in with a good shout of points. I think that's a good result already. We've now got the Red Bull of Max Verstappen emerging. We've got Lewis Hamilton sitting in his car, George Russell alongside him in the two Mercedes. They're all sitting there, tyres on, just about to roll out of the garage. And this is where it really counts. Four minutes on the clock and every driver in this top 10 shootout now desperate to find themselves right up the front. It's the fight for pole around the streets of Monte Carlo, the jewel in the crown. Nice. You did. That was Albon, nice, yes. It was pretty decent, Alex Albon. Seventh fastest that last time around. Let's see though, what everybody else has got making their way out on track. Max Verstappen looking for his second pole around the streets of Monaco. Carlos Sainz makes his way out in the Ferrari. So too does George Russell. Lewis Hamilton out on track, along with Pierre Gasly. Yuki Tsunoda emerges. Leclerc and Piastri staying in the pits for the time being. Not in a rush to get out just yet. Three minutes and 14 seconds on the clock, though. I'll have to get a move on sooner rather than later. Indeed, Leclerc and Piastri, as I say that, make their way out of the pits. Yeah, and, and the thing is, you don't really want to be out of sync with everybody. It can work in your favour, but it can also work against you. If somebody does get a yellow flag, if the uh, yellow flags come out, you are slightly at risk having somebody else set a lap and you not quite done so. Uh, I think the McLaren just rolling out the garage quite late on, so they might be the last person to cross the line. I didn't see which one of them it was. Would have been uh, Norris, I think. He Norris. was in the yeah. He was the yeah. longest in the pits, and he is now heading out with two minutes forty on the clock. Carlos Sainz makes his way uphill through Saint Devot, approaching Massenet, then it loops to the left-hand side through Casino Square, the casino to the driver's right, as you then turn right and head downhill towards Mirabeau. Slightly tricky braking off camber downhill before you then slow right down for the hairpin. Left-hand turn for Carlos Sainz, then comes the right-hander through Portier into the tunnel. Lewis Hamilton coming through sector one now, approaching that hairpin, up on Leclerc's time in sector one. Good first sector for Lewis Hamilton, who is looking and is challenging for a front row. Yeah, he's been pretty comfortable all weekend, Lewis Hamilton, or certainly more comfortable than we've seen at many races so far this year. George Russell going quicker than anybody in the first sector so far. So this fight is on and we really don't know where it's going to go. We've said Charles Leclerc looks like the more comfortable all weekend, but actually now Oscar Piastri, Lando Norris, George Russell and Lewis Hamilton potentially in with a shout too. So it's all to play for. Russell fast as anybody in the first sector. Hamilton threads the needle through the swimming pool section, rounds Raskas, round the final corner of Anthony Noves. Hamilton to the line, foot to the floor, up through the gears. The DRS rear wing open. What has Lewis Hamilton got? It's enough for fourth fastest, a 1.10.6, but there are faster lap times incoming. One of which is from his teammate, George Russell, who's coming to the line now. But Charles Leclerc is having a good middle sector. What can he do? Russell goes third fastest 1105 but he can't pit Piastri Piastri is out there now in the middle sector he's actually just behind Charles Leclerc who is making his way through the left hander of Tabak Verstappen's on the radio he said he's hit the wall there isn't a yellow flag out but is that scuppered Verstappen's chances of his fight for pole position he's currently down in fourth but can Charles Leclerc who currently sits on provisional pole cement that position he's coming to the line now Charles Leclerc underneath the gantry improves his time by a tenth and a half to take provisional pole but what could Oscar Piastri do he's down a little in the middle sector has he got enough to take his first pole position in Formula One no he hasn't he just misses out by a tenth and a half but what can his teammate do Lando Norris will be coming round into the final sector now Carlos Sainz is just in front of him slots into third the second Ferrari in third making a McLaren middle filling Norris can't do it to the line it's only enough for fourth he's out qualified by his teammate 
Max Verstappen is the last remaining challenger, but he's been on the radio to say he's hit the wall and he's going slow. Verstappen isn't going to do it. It's going to be Charles Leclerc who takes pole position around the streets of Monaco. He makes it three poles in Monte Carlo and a 35th career pole. He'll start alongside Oscar Piastri and Carlos Sainz just behind. One final car to set a lap time will be Pierre Gasly through into the top 10 for the first time this season. Has a little bit of a moment coming through the final corner of Anthony Nogues, but he'll be happy to be in the top 10. Loses time in that final section. Can't improve. Stays 10th. Pole goes to Charles Leclerc and Ferrari. Piastri second, Sainz third, Norris fourth, Russell the top five. Verstappen will start from sixth place ahead of Lewis Hamilton and then it's Sonoda, Albon and Gasly, the top ten for the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix. Charles Leclerc, the crowds went absolutely crazy when he crossed the line. They could see Verstappen was in trouble and they are celebrating. That pole position means so much to the people from Monaco. His local and his managed to convert this and make amends for oh. all of the things. Oh. oh man, this car is so slippery. Okay, Roger. That was obviously Charles, uh, no, Max Verstappen who finished down in sixth place. And I think that's a big surprise for everyone. He brushed the wall, Harry. It was quite heavy. It certainly was, and that lost him all the time. Uh, Red Bull and Verstappen haven't been happy with how the car has been handling throughout the weekend. And in the end, he'll start sixth place behind Russell and ahead of Hamilton. He'll have a Mercedes in front and behind. But what a word, uh, well, what a way to get pole position for Charles Leclerc, the Monegasque, the true home driver for the Monaco Grand Prix with a, a special helmet which sets Monaco in blaze and on it. He's out of his car celebrating with the team, Jenny. It's a third pole position in Monaco. Can this be the one that he converts to the win? Can you hear the horns blaring in the background? These super yachts are all tugging on their horns to prove a point. Charles Leclerc is on pole position for the Monaco Grand Prix tomorrow. Sainz, decent recovery actually from Carlos Sainz, having been quite a way off his teammate throughout the sessions. What was it at the end? About three tenths, but enough still to beat Lando Norris into third. Uh, so it's Leclerc ahead of Piastri, ahead of Sainz, then Norris, who fell away a little bit in that final sector. Couldn't quite match Oscar Piastri, Mark. No, it ended up being Piastri, the, mo the more comfortable of the two McLarens, didn't it, this afternoon? And, and like we said all the way through this session, as Charles Leclerc was sort of seemed like he was struggling in the early part of qualifying, the only thing that actually matters is what he does in Q3. And it was in Q3 when he absolutely put that lap all together. We talked about it being very, very close and nothing between the top five. And there really isn't anything between the top five, except for Charles Leclerc, who managed to extend two tenths. That's a decent gap around Monaco on a very short circuit. So fair play. He did it when the pressure was really on. And that's what counts. It certainly is. Oscar Piastri as well, just behind Leclerc. That will be his best start in a Grand Prix this season from the front row. And that is the best chance you have of making an overtake come Sunday's Grand Prix down into Turn 1, Jenny. Can Piastri threaten Leclerc? That'll be the big question. One of my favourite moments is the uh, warm... That, well, they all have to go and get checked by the FIA and get, uh, get on the scales and they get a little piece of paper that says their weight. And at that point, the top ten drivers are all together and it's slightly uncomfortable, but also really nice. They're all kind of congratulating each other and commiserating with each other and that... That is one of those moments where you just look in and you can be a fly on the wall in this crazy world that is F1. Absolutely. A shout out as well for those making it through in the lower half of the top 10. Yuki Tsunoda once again making his way through. It equals, uh, actually no, it's not his best. He started seventh uh, last night in Imola, didn't he? So uh, eighth spots for Tsunoda. So he follows up a seventh with an eighth. Albon ninth, Gasly 10. But let's hear it from your pulse sitter speaking with Loic Duval, Charles Leclerc will be the first one. On pole position encore à la maison, the third pole position here at home in Monaco. The laps looked amazing. How was it out there? 
It was nice. Uh, the feeling after qualifying, after qualifying lap, is always very, very special here. So, um, yeah, really, really happy about the lap. The excitement is so high that, uh, yeah, it's uh, it feels really good. However, now I know more often than not in the past. Uh, qualifying is not everything. As much as it helps a lot for Sunday's race, we need to put everything together coming the Sunday. And uh, in the past years, we didn't manage to do so. But uh, we are a stronger team, we are in a stronger position, and I'm sure we can achieve great things tomorrow, and obviously the win is the target. So, what do you need then? What do you need? You know, there's less than 200 meters from the first row to the first corner. Then there is a long race, of course. You know that it didn't turn out how you are your way, uh, you, uh, you know, in the, in the past years. What, what do you need to make sure that this time is going to be the day? I need a good launch. Uh, I need a good launch of the grid. And uh, then once uh, we do that, then uh, hopefully Carlos can have a great start and follow me into turn one and be one, two. And uh, if we are one, two, then uh, we can manage that as a team. Uh, that would be the perfect scenario. Uh, but whatever happens, we just need to, to bring that victory home. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Guys, here's the, the Prince of Monaco, you know, Charles is on pole position for tomorrow's race. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merci à tous, vraiment. Charles Leclerc, all focused on the start, speaking with Loic Duval, the man who finished on the podium in Formula 3 Euro Series here, speaking up high from across Oscar, the pit lane. Uh, really close to the first port here in Monaco. We can see the, the momentum, you know, coming with the team uh, everywhere. You're getting better, better. It's so close. So what was missing, you know, today to, to get that pole? Uh, good question. I mean, I think if you took the, the second half of my first lap in Q3 and the first half of the second one, it would have been, uh, would have been enough. But, um, yeah, just a couple of mistakes at the end. But, uh, you know, credit to Charles. He's been incredibly quick all weekend. At certain points, I don't think anyone thought, was, uh, thought we were going to get close to him. So, um, yeah, nice to be starting on the on the front row. I feel like it's been a, a good weekend in terms of building momentum. And, uh, yeah, what better colours to do it in than these? What are you going to do tomorrow to try to beat the home hero here? Is it, uh, is it at the start? Is it, uh, you know, all about strategy? Uh, we know that it's difficult to, to overtake. So what do you need to, to make this happen? Uh, a bit of both. I mean, a good start always helps. Um, and if you can get into the lead, then you can control it very easily around here so um that's probably the first goal and if not then then with strategy because uh yeah as optimistic as i want to be overtaking around here is not easy so uh we'll try our best but starting from a good spot and uh yeah chance for for a good day tomorrow all right thank you very much congratulations thank you cheers second place man oscar piastri speaking there his best start since japan last year he hands over the mic and we'll hear from third place qualifier Carlos Sainz. P1, P3 for Ferrari, third position for you. Still everything is possible from, uh, from there, of course. The car looks really, really good today. Uh, how much risk did you have to take you know, to, to make this happen? Yeah, I think overall it was uh, uh, an improvement for me. I've been struggling all weekend with uh, confidence and feeling with the car. Uh, so overall to, to step it up and be P3 was a step forward, obviously uh, not, uh, not entirely happy because I wish I, I could have been fighting for pole position, but uh, the truth is that the Charles has been doing an outstanding job. Uh, the car has been amazing all, all this uh, weekend and he managed to extract the most of it and uh, yeah, I'm happy for him. How is the car in long runs? Uh, of course, it's all, it's all about qualifying, but you still have a race to do. How is the car in long runs? Do you think that you have something in the pocket to, to beat at least one McLaren? Yeah, definitely. Um, yesterday I looked very quick on the long run, so for some reason this weekend I've been struggling on the short runs and the long run seemed much better, uh, which is something we will need to look into, but I'm confident that tomorrow the pace in the long run will be good. It's just a matter of uh, yeah, track position here and uh, we've lost it uh, with not a great uh, um, quality position, but uh, you know, it's Monaco, anything can happen like always and we will give it our best shot, but uh, the priority will be to, to win with uh, Charles tomorrow. Congratulations Thank and you. best of luck. So those are your top three. Carlos Sainz in third place, Oscar Piastri in second place and he will start alongside home favourite Charles Leclerc. His third pole position around the streets of Monaco. He's tried twice, twice he's failed. Is it third time lucky for Charles Leclerc? Certainly the fans here are all calling for him. They're all pulling for him and they will be cheering him on all of the way. 
My goodness, we thought it was going to be dramatic and it certainly was. Max Verstappen only managing to finish in sixth place and he has gone back to the uh, floating motorhome that is the Red Bull Energy Station without speaking to the media yet and I wonder what he's going to say to his engineers, what he's going to say to Christian Horner. Well, you can hear the race tomorrow, full build-up from 1.30 as I take to the grid and bring you all of the star-studded action from there. And then the race gets underway at 2 o'clock. We can't wait. Thank you so much for joining us for qualifying. Sorry for the technical issues at the top of the show, but we got there in the end. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live.